What if we told you that the most powerful laboratory in the world doesn't have any microscopes, safety goggles, or walls? When it comes to figuring out efficient solutions, no human lab can compete with nature. That's because evolution and natural selection work like an experiment. As nature's conditions change, designs can either succeed or fail. Nature is such a powerful lab because it can run millions of these evolutionary experiments simultaneously. And just like labs, nature has a lot to teach us. Studying nature to create new technologies for humans is called biologically inspired engineering, and it's been going on for hundreds of years. When we already know something works, engineering can perfect and expand it based on known scientific laws. But when we're thinking of something new, we often need a place to start. That's why scientists observe nature, to find solutions we wouldn't have thought of alone. Imagine if humans had never seen an animal flying. Could engineering have led us to the skies? The first humans to attempt flight tried to copy birds' bodies exactly. In the year 1010, for example, a monk named Oliver of Malmesbury built a pair of human-sized wings and jumped off his abbey with them but he fell almost immediately and broke both of his legs. Oliver's strategy didn't work because he copied the birds exactly as he saw them, or pixel by pixel, instead of trying to understand the basic principles of flight. Almost a thousand years later, the Wright brothers still studied birds for inspiration, but they didn't copy birds pixel by pixel. Instead, they used principle-based engineering to apply their observations in a way that humans could actually use. And today, although our helicopters and spacecraft don't look much like birds at all, we are able to make them fly because we understand how to apply basic principles to new situations. Let's take a break from the sky and visit the bottom of the ocean to check out a glass sponge called the Venus Flower Basket. This sponge uses a network of hair-like fibers called spicules to hold itself still in the soft ocean floor. Each spicule has a solid core encircled by cylinders that get thinner as you move farther from the center. Now you can't ask nature why it does what it does, but the unusual geometric pattern of cylinders in the spicules made a research team suspect that this design had a purpose for the glass sponge, possibly to help make it strong. But we can't just start making technology that imitates spicules pixel by pixel. First, we have to make sure that this natural design is really a source of strength. To do that, the researchers set up a theoretical model that works with physics principles. They use the model to predict the strongest possible beam design using cylindrical layers. Now the model could have come up with anything, small layers to big ones, big thick layers, or even one giant layer, which is the way most beams are designed already but the strongest layer design looked exactly like the spicule, which means the spicule shape must have at least something to do with strength. Also, if strength is important to the sponge, it might have even more physical features that make it strong and that we can study to engineer stronger structures. So now that we know the spicule design is strong, what can we do with it? Here's an example. Engineers have been able to manufacture strong materials like steel, but they're often not very cheap or environmentally friendly. If we can make a lightweight layer beam out of, say, wood that's just as strong as a uniform steel beam, imagine the environmental and economic benefits. What other secrets to innovation and efficiency might be flying over our heads or hiding below the surface? We'll have to keep looking to find out. And while we look, make sure we understand the scientific principles that drive our natural experiments. Thank you.